Let's move on to receivers, shall we? First up, do it. I called it. I am the man. I said it last week. You scoffed at me. He was one of my starts of the week. And I you just thought I was being ridiculous. I did. But why don't you go ahead, pick up, plug and play the corpse of T.Y. Hilton, who now yeah. has 20 plus fantasy points in each of the last two weeks, uh, had seven targets this past week, five catches, 86 yards, two touchdowns, finished with 23 fantasy points and half PPR scoring. Some, some of our listeners are listening. They are adding T.Y. He's now rostered in 60% of leagues, so not technically eligible for our purposes of this, but uh, should be rostered. Take a look, see, see if he's there. Has the lowly Houston Texans up this uh, on the docket this week. Should be started. Uh, and then at Pittsburgh next week. Um, are you picking up T.Y.? And if you are, how much fab are you spending on him if he's still there? Uh, I would spend all of it. Um... I mean, the, the Houston matchup is a good one. I mean, look at what the, um, or sorry. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The Houston matchup is a good one. Look at what the bears did against them. Mitch had three touchdowns in the first half. Um, th- they didn't even look like they were trying half the game or they were in slow motion or whatever. So yeah, I would, I, I would pick up CY. I would start him, um, with no reservations. Um, so him and cam Akers are the, are the two, um, if they're available, just drop it all on them and, and start them because they're going to be productive. So um, he he is definitely, um, you know, a, a wide receiver two four this week, um, in my opinion. Um, so I would I would go ahead and and do it. Um, I would also and I don't think he's on the list that, that we were talking, but just as I'm kind of browsing around, Kiki QT um, is rostered in only 30 um 33 percent of leagues um and so game script is going to fit here where i can see indy getting out ahead early them pounding it with uh with jonathan taylor um and wilkins and naheem hines and and kiki qt is basically the only guy that that the texans might have especially if brandon cooks isn't going to play i know he had three he only had three for 24 uh, against the Bears, but he did have a score. Um, Indy has been a little more leaky on the back end um, than than they were to start the season. So um, I still I still would start Ty over him, but QT is a is a definitely pick upable um, if you're in a tight spot against Indy. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't game script. It's going to be there. They're going to have to throw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, it didn't I matter mean, this last week, right? I mean, even with Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, and Cobb all out of the lineup, he still only caught three of three targets for twenty four yards. Like, would you would you rather add Chad Hansen, who's had seven targets in each of the last two weeks? He's only rostered in two point eight percent of leagues for Houston. The handsome um, one. So I mean, he, he's had over you know. He's basically only played in two games. He's had seven targets in both of the last two weeks. Um, five for 101 against Indy the week before. QT went off against Indy um, in week 13 as well. So uh, I'm just saying that I, I would not be surprised to to have either one of them be definitely playable um, wide, wide receiver threes um, at worst. Um, honestly, just because of game script, they're going to have to throw. Indy is eighth on the season in terms of fantasy points given up to receivers. They are 13th uh, in, in, in over the last month in terms of fantasy points given up to receivers. So, I mean, to your point, they have been a little bit more leaky over the last month. Whether or not I would start QT, I think I would definitely look elsewhere to some of these other guys before getting, getting that desperate. Um, just okay, because cute. I, I do... I, yes, don't be a QT. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up. Oh, uh, we skipped around here a little bit, Ski. I did. Um, let's go to Nelson Aguilar, rostered in a whopping 27.5% of leagues. Um, Nelson Aguilar had a whopping 18.5 fantasy points this week 
against the Indianapolis Colts that we just talked about being a little bit more leaky. Um, leaky. Five catches for 100 yards on a whopping nine targets and a score. 18 and a half fantasy points has the Chargers and Miami the next two weeks. Both games cool. are at home in Vegas. Are you like it's all or nothing. I if if you want to push your chips into the middle, yeah. then start Nelson Aguilar because you're getting five points or you're getting like 18 and there's no in the middle. His last his scoring since week seven, 19 points. Zero points, and he played that game. Twelve and a half points, one point, and he played that game. Eighteen points, eight points, six points, eighteen points. Like he is a roller coaster to start. You have the Chargers. You're at home, which is good. Um, I'd be interested to see his road versus home splits, but huh? Are you getting ballsy and starting Nelson Aguilar? I mean, you can from a target perspective. The opportunities are there. Um, I mean, you you look at the last four weeks: nine, eleven, six, and nine. Um, so that'll that'll play. I mean, he's scored in four of six home games this year. If you're talking about road splits or away splits, um, that's that's pretty good. Um, and the Chargers' pass defense is dreadful. Like, I I don't see how that, they're ninth like, against receivers and fantasy points. In the last yeah, month. Okay, but fantasy points to quarterbacks, I think they were 32nd coming into last week, weren't they? Or 30, 30th? Um, so on like, the I, season? Yeah. Uh, on the season, they are 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23 overall to the quarterback. Get out of here with that. No, they they were giving up the fifth most points to to wide receivers coming into last or sorry to quarterbacks coming into the uh, coming into last week. So I I still what they're twenty seventh against. Look at Matt Ryan from last last week. So I I just think that Al Gore is going to have a big game. Um, he he is the ultimate boomer bust guy. Um, but I would I mean if you're especially if you're desperate. And you are facing like um, Derrick Henry and Montgomery, and you know you're going to have to go off to win to get to the title game. It's worth trying to play one of those boomer bust guys to try to get there because you know that those two guys, as just as an example, are going to go off. And so you got to make up points somewhere. And the only way to do it is by trying to get one of those guys to go off. And I think Aguilar is somebody that could go off. Um, So that's why I would recommend him to you. Um, So there you go. Low end wide receiver two with wide receiver one upside. Uh, That's kind of how I view him. Um, Maybe a high end wide receiver three, just because of the volatility. Uh, Next up we have, well, how much, how much fab are you spending? Zero. These are zero ad, right? Uh, probably. I mean, let's be honest. You're only bidding against three other guys, probably for him. Um, yeah. so for that reason, yeah. Also, I, I would note that like, and I'm not saying Nelson Aguilar is Calvin Ridley, but in a, in a similar spot where there's not a ton of other options. I mean, Ridley just put up eight for 124 in a score. I know that he's obviously way better than Aguilar, but, um, they, the chargers will give it up. And I, I expect that to be a very high scoring game um, between two defenses that just can't stop anybody. Yeah, I mean, you do make a great point about how you're only making waiver moves against three other people. Um, I think that he's a fine fill in if you had somebody like Devontae Parker who got hurt. Mm-hmm. I think he's a fine dart throw um, or Brandon Cooks who got hurt. I mean, there was a lot of guys. Debo got hurt. Um, yeah, if you survived it. He- like if you survive to get to this round, then yeah, I mean, take a shot and go go for the for the title game appearance. There we go. All right. Next up, we have one of my favorites. Um, real overachiever this season has done great filling in for Cortland Sutton. That is Tim Patrick, who's currently wide receiver 36 on the season. Um, I don't think anybody saw a top 40 season coming for Tim Patrick out of the gate. Um, <laughs> Did it again this last week against Carolina. Had another 
end zone appearance. Um, the line, the line on a week to week basics is not super impressive, but his weekly average uh, is not very offensive. Uh, he's averaging ten <laughs> more than he's averaging more than ten points per week. Like, and that's with the bum zero point week in there when they started a practice squad receiver at quarterback Um, Mm -hmm. three for 36 and a touch on five targets against Carolina. I mean, against Kansas city the week before he was able to turn four targets into two touchdowns. Like he's one of drew locks, favorite red zone targets. They have Buffalo at home. Buffalo has let people score recently. And so um, if you are looking to make a, a dart throw, I think that Tim Patrick is just as good as about anybody, um, and would start him against Buffalo. Um, I think he's also a zero bid. What about you? Yeah. I mean, theoretically he's going to be facing Tredavious white who, um, has actually been really pretty good for the bills this year. Um, I would, um, do you think so? Yeah. I, you don't I think do. he's on Judy or Hamler? I mean, no. I mean, of of I mean, it seems like Tim Patrick is their number one wide receiver. Judy, or unless Judy teams are trying to stop Judy, Judy hasn't done much at all. It, it has been Hamler and it has been Patrick, um, which is just shocking um, that it's not Jerry Judy that that is in this position, right? Um, yeah, Tim Patrick should be owned in more than twenty percent of leagues. He's been very consistent. Um, just hope that Drew Locke gets on the ball. Um, otherwise, yeah, he's... I, I would not... Again, I, I don't think you need to, to bid any fab on him. Um, but I, I think you can get him. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm a little bit less intimidated by Tredavious White. The Bills are 22nd in, uh, against receivers in terms of fantasy points over the last month. Um, I'd start him. They have to score. I mean, I don't know. I think I think they'll do okay. I mean, they can score zero. That is an option. That is true. That is true. Um, I think they will score. Now, <laughs> since we're since we're already talking about him, why don't we just talk about KJ Hamler while we're here too? Um, yep. He's rostered in a whopping six and a half percent of leagues. Hamler is a stud in terms of real football. I'm not sure that he is viable in fantasy. He's really fast. He's extremely fast. He only had three targets. He turned two of them into touchdowns for 86 yards total. Had 21 and a half fantasy points against Carolina. You can't start KJ Hamler. There's better options. He's rostered in six and a half percent of fantasy leagues. He should only be added in the deepest of leagues. Yep. Uh, Pass. But somebody to just be aware of. Pass. All righty. Well, then we'll move on. Um, let's see here. Up next, we have Russell Gage of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, some health concerns, issues surrounding Julio. Um, Russell Gage has reappeared after his absence in the middle of the season. Uh, he has poked his head up out of the uh, hole that he crawled into the last couple weeks. Uh, the last two weeks, he has 15 targets. And uh, 133 fan, or excuse me, 133 receiving yards on nine catches with one touchdown over the last two games. Um, looked, he threw one too. Oh, there you go. Um, looked good against the Chargers, five for 82. They have Tampa. Tampa has been lit up on fire um, against receivers they are the worst team against in terms of giving up fantasy points to receivers over the last four weeks they have nobody has given up more fantasy points than Uh the tampa bay buccaneers giving up an average of 60 points per week per game to the receiving position so russell gage i think could be a nice little play here especially if julio sits and maybe even if julio plays yeah, I agree. It's if Julio sits, um, you know, other than T.Y., um, I mean, Russell Gage might be... Uh, other than T.Y. and Aguilar, um, I, I would think I would, Gage would come in third for me, um, only if Julio's not playing. Uh, would you spend any fab on Gage? 
I don't think you need to. Again, I, I think you're not been against that many people. So um, I, I think you just put a zero bid in on them, depending on what your roster flexibility is. There you go. You heard it here first. Next up, we have Keelan Cole Sr. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I wrote him down, too. And I, it's just so just so disappointing to like yeah. it's it's him or LaVisca or DJ Chark. And one of them will be like a wide receiver two, and the other two will do nothing. And it'll Keelan be Keelan Cole had 12 targets. He had a seven like, for 67 and a score on 12 targets. I know most of the year, and he's been like relatively consistent. So, does Gardner Minshew coming back help, help them? Um, I mean, as, as we're recording this, Baltimore. Um, has just gotten destroyed by um, by the Browns. They've given up, what, three, two straight touchdowns here. Baker's brought him back. So, like, and by the way, uh, Lamar Jackson's out with cramps. So, Trace McSorley's playing, um, which is oh, an TikTok issue. TikTok is going to go wild. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought that Lamar was going to be uh, QB1 potentially the rest of the way with how the rushing is going, but now he's not playing. So, um, back to Keewen Cole and the wonderful Jaguars. Um, I, I do think they're going to throw a ton. Um, now, now that Minshew's back, um, yeah, they still have James Robinson. Um, if you, it, this is like the worst game of Russian roulette is trying to decide which Jaguars wide receiver is the one to play on a given week. Um, Keewen Cole, Levisk Chenault, DJ Chark. DJ Chark at some point is going to go off and Keelan Cole will do nothing again, but good luck trying to figure out which one it is. They're like, I mean, their schedule is at Baltimore at home against Chicago at Indiana. Like I don't want to start a receiver in any of those games. Like probably not. Marlon Humphrey, Kyle Fuller back to back. Like see you later, DJ Chark. Uh, Minshew, if he was going to do something, it was going to be this week against the Titans. Only went 18 of 31 for 178 and a score. Yeah, you only played the second half, though. Okay. Yeah, I'll give it to you then. But, man, he threw... He threw 31 passes and a half? That's correct, yeah. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I think he's viable the rest of the way, because they're just going to throw the ball so much. James Robinson managers, look out. Like, that is a bomb on your roster, I think. Potentially. If they're going to throw that much, then... Woof. Yeah, uh, Mike Glennon had one drive in the second half before he got pulled, so Minshew threw 31 times in the second half. Good for him. Um, Keelan Cole is a zero bid for me. I'm probably not playing him. Uh, I want T.Y., Aguilar, Patrick... Uh, and gauge all more than I want Keen Cole. Probably. Um, all right. Next up, we're getting to these depth dart throws. First up, we have is it Tyrone or Tyron? Ty I'm gonna uh, go with you're, you're, I have no idea. His name's his last name is Johnson. Ty, I'm calling him Tyrone. Tyrone Johnson rostered in a whopping 0.0% .0 of fantasy football leagues. You guys stay with us because we we hit players before anybody else does. We're the sackers. Literally, literally. literally anybody. Nobody has him. No, not even his parents. He didn't even no. draft himself. That's true. 0.0% .0 of fantasy leagues had seven targets, six catches for 55 yards, and a score 14 and a half fantasy points. Has, has the Las Vegas Raiders this week uh is he a one-week wonder or do you think he could be more it could be um uh, just look out see if uh, mike williams is going to play or not if he doesn't i mean if you need a long shot dark throw um i mean he he was the guy that, that came in instead of jalen guyton so sure what the hell <laughs> love it all right that's going to bring us to our last waiver wire ad at receiver and that is gabriel davis all the guy does is score touchdowns 
uh, has been a regular player for the Buffalo Bills since John Brown headed to IR a few weeks ago, has a touchdown in each of the last three straight games, had eight targets against Pittsburgh. Granted, he only turned them into three catches for 19 yards, but you like to see the volume. Did have a score. Um, he's, I think he's exciting. He's a very exciting rookie receiver at Denver this week, at New England next week. Wouldn't be shocked if he gets into the end zone. Uh, Hail Mary, deep guy in like 16 team leagues. Um, yeah, is what I would say. He's rostered in 5% of leagues. So, agree. 